Plenty of times on this channel already, I've talked about VO2 intervals and I've talked about things like how one-to-one -one work to rest ratio is really effective and 95% of your velocity at VO2 max or max wattage is really useful. And I've used running and cycling as our key examples there. But I had a question come up on the channel and I didn't actually get back to it until now. And this question came through almost a year ago on a video I did when I first started up the videos here on the channel asking about, well, what happens when we're swimming? What about when we jump in the pool? Can we still get those VO2 intervals done? And is it the same principles we need to follow to get the same physiological stimulus? So in this video, I'm gonna be covering my sort of thoughts and the thought process I go through when I'm programming swimming for athletes, particularly here, we're talking about triathletes. Pure swimmers, you might get something out of this as well, so stick around. But we're looking at do the same VO2 interval, high intensity interval training session uh, principles that apply to things like cycling and running apply in the pool as well. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here, making sports science simple. And in this video, we're talking about VO2 intervals in the pool or from a swimming perspective. Can we use the same principles that we take from our bike and run sessions and just drop them into the pool and get a really effective physiological stimulus? And the first thing I'm gonna talk about isn't probably something you thought about, but it is something that you might have experienced, is the differences in resistances. And the, the obvious thing is when we're running and cycling, we have air resistance. That's our primary resistance we have to overcome in terms of external environment, realistically. Apart from worrying about our body weight, things like that, it's, we're moving through air. So it's a lot, it's quite easy to move through air. And what does that mean is that, and it's quite, I guess, intuitive, a pattern like running or even cycling. It's quite easy to pick up, even if we're not the most technically gifted or from a skill perspective, we don't have the best technique or, or maybe the best bike fit. We can still get very, very close to our actual VO2 max intensity. And ultimately 95, 100% of VO2 max, velocity at VO2 max, power at VO2 max, whatever you might be using if you're cycling or running, to get the stimulus from VO2 intervals. We've talked about on this channel before, 95, 100% of VO2 max, one to one work to rest ratio, things like two to four minutes on with an equal, very, very easy recovery. These are the things that we know work in terms of generating some improved aerobic power, improving how much oxygen we can use and how effectively we use that oxygen as well. When we move over to the pool, we now work in a completely different fluid around us. We, we, if, if that's the, the words we wanna use, we're now in water, it's much more dense, uh, environment, it's much harder resistance to overcome. So what that automatically means is that from a, a body movement perspective, it's much harder to generate our VO2-like intensities because for most people, particularly triathletes and particularly the amateur end, or the triathletes who aren't great swimmers, even pure swimmers uh, struggle with this at times. The guys who are absolute gun, the guys and girls who are absolute gun swimmers in the pool struggle to get the intensity up there slightly for a different reason. I'll come to them in a moment, but the amateurs who are, uh, and the triathletes who aren't great swimmers, struggle to get the intensity up just because they can't purely swim fast enough. That's the first thing we have to we have to think about is that you may not be able to get up to the equivalent of 95 or 100% of your VO2 max in terms of getting your oxygen consumption up there. And that's really the kicker when it comes to these VO2 intervals is we wanna try and get oxygen consumption and really stress the body to get its oxygen consumption up and then sustain it repeatedly over the session to be able to generate that stress on the body get better at taking and transporting and utilizing oxygen. But if we can't get a high enough intensity in the first place, well, there's our first problem. We're not gonna get the oxygen consumption up. So if we have a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio and we do these two to four minute length intervals, um, we're just not getting the intensity up in the first place. The recovery, we, we drop all the way back down, our oxygen consumption back, comes all the way back down effectively. And we're just not hitting that, that same minimum stimulus to get a physiological adaptation. From a really gun swimming perspective, if you are a gun swimmer, you jump in the pool, you're awesome, you can get a high intensity, you might still be missing out on getting the actual stimulus at VO2 max up. Why? Because it's probably coming, that intensity or that pace in the pool is more coming from how effective your technique is. Predominantly swimming largely is a, a very technical sport. If you, you put someone side by side, someone working really, really hard in the pool and someone who's got a really effective technique, majority of the time, the person with the really effective technique will probably be faster. And in which case, if they're not working as hard because their technique's effective, that's a good performance output. And, and in terms of end result, we wanna really have that for all of our endurance sports, whether it be running or cycling, we wanna use as minimal energy for maximum speed in terms of output. But from a VO2 stimulus perspective, we need the oxygen consumption up. And if you're making it easier for yourself by improving your technique or having a good technique, we're not hitting the benchmark there either. So if we are looking at 
physiology. Let's jump in the pool and let's try and do some efforts and some intervals that are gonna get us that same, same taste for what we're getting on the bike and run potentially or external to the pool. I'd be working on things like maybe a two to one or a three to one work to rest ratio. Drop the recovery period down because what we know is we can't get the oxygen consumption all the way up there. We're a li- bit limited. It's a really sh- big struggle to get the oxygen consumption up. So by instead of having a one to one work to rest, by having a short recovery, oxygen consumption comes down in the recovery period, but that's straight back up there. So we're, we're having a bit of an accumulating effect across the session rather than sort of up and then we recover so we can repeat that very high intensity, that optimal intensity. We can't quite get the optimal intensity, so let's have a short recovery to try and maintain as much of that oxygen consumption and stress the body in a slightly different way. It may not be as ideal as doing those um, the, the sessions on, on a bike or running, for example, because we're not getting all the way up in the area out. Ideal, 95, 100% of VO2 max, but it's a different way of trying to maintain as much of that stress or stimulus on the body as we can to improve that take-in transport utilization of oxygen. I would then argue, coming back to our point on technique, do we then have a trade-off between are we trying to get fitter in the pool or are we just trying to get faster? If our primary goal is to get fitter in the pool, if you're a pure swimmer, well, sure, working on your technique, but then doing some of these sessions where it is a bit more physiological based, that is your sport, so that's where we're going to focus all of our time. If you're a triathlete or someone who does some other sports as well and, and swimming's not your 100% of your time training methodology, I would then think about if we're trying to get fitter and faster, where is our best time spent? Is our best time spent maybe getting a bit of a stimulus or getting that high oxygen consumption um, up by doing a, a bit of a hybrid protocol, not quite right, it, it's a little bit off, we're not really sure of what our intensity is because you can't look at your watch when you're actually swimming and it's a bit of a mess. Are we better off doing that and sort of not working on our technique or are we better off in the pool working on our technique, working on actually how can we swim quicker regardless of if that's making us work harder or or not actually ideally trying to make us work less in the pool, make it easier for us to overcome that different resistance in terms of the density of the water. How can we move through the water more effectively through an improved technique, which is ultimately gonna make us faster when we get into our race or our competitive environment. And let's focus more of our time in terms of the physiological adaptation where we know we can genuinely get that stimulus and we can almost guarantee the correct stimulus. So that might be on the bike or the run instead. And even if you are a pure swimmer, maybe that's something you consider in terms of doing a session out of the pool to make sure you can get your oxygen consumption up as high as you can. If you're, a, if you're a swimmer who just naturally can't swim very, very fast in the pool or fast enough, you might be good over 1500 or three Ks in the pool. If you're or, or an open water swimmer, three Ks might be great, but you might need to do some supplementary bike or maybe even running work to get the oxygen consumption up. Even something like we're going through at the moment, we're back in lockdown here again in Melbourne or we're coming out of another one. If you're in lockdown, you don't have access to a pool, well, you're gonna to have to find a different method as well. So that's where I sort of think, maybe going for, uh, in terms of that trade-off perspective, going for our physiological stimulus, maybe out of the pool, is generally gonna be a bit easier to control and make sure we very pinpoint that stimulus. Working on technique is a much better way to go, particularly for, for our triathletes or people who are non-swimmer specific. If you are a swimmer, might be useful to go for some of that physiology in the pool, but think about maybe supplementing outside as well. So there's a couple of quick thoughts in terms of my ideas around VO2 intervals and swimming. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you try? What are your favorite swim sets in terms of very similar to our uh, VO2 style of boosting up some speed in the pool? What is your balance like in terms of the trade-off between just trying to get in an improved technique so you can swim more effectively and faster through the water versus just trying to get fitter? Because at the end of the day, most people who are triathletes, for example, you're getting a lot done on the bike, you're getting a lot done on the run. The swimming's not gonna make you any fitter, it's just the requirement to get through in the race so you can get to the bike and the run. And ultimately, you're gonna be as fit as you are already, it's just can we transition that into a new sport now by getting better in terms of technique. So from, from that perspective, I think that's probably a better way to go, focus on the technique. But if you have some other ideas, always happy to hear them, leave them in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave it there, I already talked a bit today, hopefully you got something out of this video and we'll see you in the next one.